Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about the sorting techniques. Now basically we have talked about the big O notation right and now we know that if you want to judge the algorithm which you are writing, you have to make sure that you are using an algorithm which is efficient in terms of time and space as well. We are focusing more on the time complexity where as your data increases, it should not increase your time exponentially. So we have seen different levels of uh, time complexity and we want to be into that lower zone, not on the upper zone, right? Now, when it, when it comes to understanding different algorithms, we have to go for some inbuilt algorithms, right? Or some old algorithm, which normally we use. So sorting, so we have talked about searching. Sorting is one of the way you can learn more about algorithms and how do you make it more efficient. Also in the real world, we do use sorting a lot. So let's say when you, when you say you want to search something on the internet, or maybe you want, you want to buy something on the Amazon, you do that uh, sort by price, sort by reviews, right? So you do that multiple times. So Sorting is majorly used. So there are a lot of different sorting techniques available. So we'll try to understand them. Not everything or not every algorithm, but let's try to understand few of them. Now, if we talk about these algorithms, some algorithms are easy or simple to understand, but they are not time efficient. And then there are some algorithms which are good in terms of time. So they are time efficient, but they're not simple to understand. Okay. Uh, so we have to do a trade off here. Now, which is the best one that depends. If you have less number of elements and if you're learning for the education purpose or to understand how sorting works, then we can talk about those algorithms like bubble sort, selection sort. And then there are some algorithms which are a bit difficult and they are very efficient when you have huge amount of data. Now what are I'm talking about? So when you talk about sorting, there are different options available. So we have bubble sort, selection sort, interesting sort, uh, merge sort, quick sort, counting sort, uh, Redix, uh, heap sort, bucket sort, and there are multiple sorting techniques. The famous one are bubble sort, quick sort, selection sort, insertion, and then merge sort, if I'm not repeated that multiple times. So let's start with the first one, which is bubble sort. Now bubble sort is not efficient, but it is simple to understand. So that gives us a starting point. When we talk about bubble sort, why do we use it? So let's say if you want to sort different elements, so let's say we have this list in front of you. The numbers are eight, six, nine, two, four, five. Now, if you want to basically sort them, how will you do it? Now, of course, we don't have a magical way where you can find, hey, this is the first one, this is the second one. So what you do is you basically try to use some algorithm like bubble sort to sort it. In this, what you do is you basically create a bubble. Now, what exactly this bubble is, take one element, put that into bubble and shift it to the end. Okay, now that sounds weird, right? So let's let's do step by step. Now, when you have this value, let's say you have six value in front of you, you can put them in an array like this, and then you have provided the index values. Now, if you want to do this sorting on this, of course, we want uh, ascending sorting here. So basically we want to at the start, then four, uh, then five, then six, then eight, and then nine. That's a sequence we want, but how will you get it? So what you do is you compare two values at a time. So let's say if you put six people in front of you and they want to sort them according to their height. So what you do, of course, you will compare two people at a time, right? That's how you sort. And then you will try to swap them. So how it exactly it works. So let's say we have these two values here, eight and six. And then what you do is you want to make sure that the biggest element from this particular array in the first iteration goes to the end. Okay, so the way you do that is first you compare the first two values. Now, these are your first two values when you're comparing it. If the first value is greater than the second value, you basically need to swap. Okay, swapping is very important here. So you have to first compare the first two values. If the first value is greater than the second value, then you have to swap. And then you basically shift your pointer to the next two values. Okay, done. We are done with the six. Now let's go for the next two. The next two is eight and nine. If the first value is greater than the second value, you have to swap. In this case, they are not. They are so the first value is less than the second value. So what you do is you simply say skip because there's no swapping needed. Then you go for the next two values. The first value is greater than the second value. So of course we have to swap. And then again, you shift your values. Next two values, again, you will compare the first value is greater than second, swap. Then again, you will compare the next two value. The first value is greater than second, swap. So basically after the first iteration, you got the biggest value at the end, but is it sorted? Unfortunately not. You need to do this operation one more time. Actually not one more time, multiple times till you get this sorted. Now this also depends upon the size of your elements or array. 
Now in this case, uh, the first five values are still unsorted. The last one is done. So we don't have to touch the last element. So in the first iteration, if you're going for six times, the second iteration, you can go for five times. The third iteration, you can go for four times. So let's see how that works. Now, after the first iteration, we got the nine value at the end. Now what you do is, again, you repeat the same steps. Compare the first two values. Is it required to swap? In this case, no, we can skip it. Next two values, is the first value greater than second value? Yes, swap it. Then again, you go for the next two values. Is get eight greater than four? Yes, swap it. Is then again, next two values, eight greater than five? Yes, swap it. Now in this case, what happened is, after the two iterations, you got the two biggest values, which is eight and nine at the end. Now we know that those two values are sorted, but what about the other values? Those are not sorted, so let's sort them. Again, you have to repeat the same steps. So you have to say six, two, which is six is greater than two. Again, we have to swap it. Six and four, greater than six is greater than four, swap it. Six and five, again, swap it. So now, after this iteration, you got three values, six, eight, nine, which is sorted. But what about the other values? They're still unsorted. I mean, we know they're sorted now, but your algorithm has no idea if they're sorted. Okay, now this is tricky is because your algorithm goes from start to end. Okay, it will not check for do the other values are sorted or not. So it will keep doing that. So it will compare uh, the first two values, not swap not needed. Next two values, swap not needed, done. We have also confirmed five. Still there's a confusion for two and four. Your algorithm has no idea those Two are already sorted, but still it will try to sort them. It will compare the two values. They are compared, swapping not needed. So by doing that, four is confirmed. And since you only have one element now, that itself is sorted. And by doing this, you got the entire sorted array. So yes, even if you it is sorted, it will still check. We are reducing one step, which is swapping but still you are checking. And that's why bubble sort is not an efficient algorithm. And the problem is the time complexity for this is O of n squared because you have to use two loops, one for the iterations and the inner loop for each iteration, you have to compare the values. So that's your n squared. Not a good way of, of sorting the elements. Now think about six elements. So that's good. Six squared is not a big number. It is actually, but what about if you have a very big array or a very big list, let's say 20 values, 30 values, Imagine the number of steps it will take. So not an efficient algorithm, but easy to understand. Now it's time to convert this into a code, which we'll do in the next video.